Yo what's up guys my name is Hacky and in this video we're gonna take a look at the fastest cars in GTA Online an updated version of this one that is much needed since we have some new fast cars to check out. These are gonna be in no particular order but I just decided to group the fastest cars when it comes to both acceleration, top speed, kind of a hybrid of the two and ultimately how they do in terms of lap times and drag races. First one is actually more of a recently released car and that is the BMW i8 and the game is called the Niobe I think think that's how you pronounce it because Rockstar hasn't really given us a clear answer to the pronunciation of this thing because it could be the Niob, Niobe, but whatever. We're just gonna call it the Niobe. That's my guess. Now we're specifically talking about the HSW version of this thing, which is actually a very expensive HSW upgrade. If you want to own the Niobe in the first place, you can for a decent price tag of 1.8 million, but then the HSW upgrade is an extra 1.8 million. So that is crazy expensive. The fact that the HSW upgrade is is literally the same price as buying the vehicle in the first place is crazy. On top of that, make sure you add all of the expensive HSW performance upgrades and all the customizations. So you're probably looking at spending about $4 million more or less for a fully upgraded HSW Niobe. Very expensive, but honestly, for people that have the money, it's pretty worth it because it's an amazing looking car and it also performs amazingly. It's really well balanced when it comes to the performance. The speed of it isn't way better than the handling and vice versa. The hand handling isn't way better than the speed. Both of them are really good, especially the speed of this thing since in this video we're focused on the fastest cars. It's a top tier car in the sports class, both in top speed and lap time. The top speed could get to just about 160 miles per hour, which is extremely fast for the sports class. It's faster than most of the supercars we have in the game as well. And the biggest highlight for me with it isn't even the looks, it's actually the performance and the fact that even though it's extremely fast, it still has some solid traction and it's a relatively easy car to drive around so i'm very happy with it overall even though it's expensive that's really the only downside with it the price of it and the price you have to pay for it maxing it out completely with hsw inside of the ls car mate i don't want this video to be full hsw so i'm gonna mix some regular cars in there for people that don't want to spend extra or just happen to still play on old gen so this car is available on all platforms the benefactor krieger it's been my go-to supercar for the long longest time and like with the Niobe it's got a great balance of speed and easy handling. When it comes to top speed there's a few supercars that actually have a higher top speed but have way way worse handling and personally I'm someone that just has to have a relatively decently handling car otherwise it's just too hard to drive for me especially in races. There's a reason I dislike a car like the X80 Proto that thing is like almost undrivable and for a non HSW car we don't really have to spend as much so you're not going to be spending nearly as much as you spend with the Niobe, for example. So this one's still expensive with that being said, just under a $2.9 million price tag. But again, it's a top tier supercar. So it shouldn't really surprise that it's on the higher end of supercar prices. But without all the HSW stuff, you're still going to be spending less than you would for an HSW car. Another car on this list that's surprisingly not a sports car or a supercar. It's actually an F1 car, the BR8 F1 car. Obviously, this one's a bit of a different one just because it's a different type of vehicle and if you didn't know f1 cars actually have a special feature with them so if you press down on the left stick you actually get yourself a boost and you get a little effect on your screen with it as well giving you even more speed than you already have with an f1 car and it's no secret that i mean the traction with an f1 car is unmatched it literally feels like you're stuck to the road so driving an f1 car is definitely something you need to get used to since it's a bit different from driving other vehicles but i personally find it really fun to drive an f1 car the only downside is they have no real armor so if you're just driving around in free mode anyone could pretty much just blow you up but hopefully that doesn't happen and you could just have fun driving around in peace then we have the house special works cyclone 2 this is the second version of the cyclone only available on current gen consoles so the series x and s and the ps5 the main thing about this one is the crazy acceleration the acceleration of this one is actually ridiculous the 0 to 60 i want to say is probably under like a second i feel like like you can even get a good sense of how ridiculous it is just from this gameplay alone but actually playing the game you can really feel how fast it starts going once you press the gas button it's easily one of the if not the fastest accelerating vehicles in the whole game by far but it is a bit problematic when it comes to the handling side of it because unlike the previous vehicles we talked about this one actually is a bit difficult to get used to what i noticed about it is the turning radius is extremely short as long as you keep on pressing gas 
gas, but when you let go of gas, it actually becomes okay. And so you basically have to get used to just letting go of the gas button every time you want to turn, which can be a little bit annoying because if you don't let go of the gas button, trust me, you are bound to crash because you can barely turn. The top speed is also good, but the highlight of it is hands down the ridiculously good acceleration. I have completed many HSW time trials with the Cyclone 2, so it's not like it's undrivable, but it definitely is a bit different than other cars. The Ocelot Virtue is up next, and this is one of my favorite vehicles in the game. You can actually get it for completely free by completing the first and last dose missions. It's pretty much like a reward you get at the very end. And it's a great electric supercar. It's also electric like the Cyclone 2, and it also has some crazy acceleration, but better handling than the Cyclone 2. If I had to pick one of the two electric cars, I'd go for the Virtue. I just think it's better overall, and it's a Monitech upgradable, which you can't say about a lot of cars on this list, meaning you can equip the missile lock-on jammer on it, so it's a really safe vehicle to drive around. No one's going to be able to lock onto you with the homing missiles. The top speed of it isn't going to be at the level of the Niobe HSW because it's an electric car, so usually they're really good at accelerating, but not as good with top speed. That's the case with this one, but it's a really fast car overall anyway. The weaponized Ignis is a really expensive one to get, I have to say, but it's an overall amazing vehicle to own, and it's really unique because of the fact that one, it's a supercar, two, it's a weaponized supercar, and three, it's an HSW upgradable weaponized vehicle, which is a rarity. Meaning that having one of these, you get a really fast car with a crazy strong machine gun on the top of it. It can literally blow up any streetcar within like two, three seconds. So it's a really powerful machine gun, way more powerful than something like the Night Sharks machine gun. It's pretty much a better version of the regular Ignis, if you ask me. I mean, it handles well. Obviously, it's fast if it's included in this video. It costs $4.5 million before any upgrades. With the HSW upgrade, it's an extra 500k, so a relatively cheap HSW upgrade, but it makes sense because, I mean, getting the car in the first place is going to be really pricey anyway. How do I say this lightly? It's not the most budget-friendly thing in the world, but it's still a great car. Adding another non-HSW car to this list, we have the Tally RSX. One of the better-looking sports cars in the game. I really like the looks of it, and on top of that, it's got a really high top speed, even faster than the Tally GTO. Buying this car, you're buying a lot of speed, but sacrificing a bit of handling. So let's say the GTO is a bit better handling, but not as fast when it comes to top speed. I prefer the GTO just because, as I said earlier, I'm big when it comes to good handling. The RSX is one of the, if not the most expensive sports cars in the game. That's non-HSW, of course, because the Niobe beats it by a mile. A price tag of just under three and a half million is definitely pretty freaking steep, especially for a sports car. To give you perspective, that's six hundred thousand dollars more expensive than the Benefactor Krieger supercar. A bit overpriced if you ask me, but it is a really fast car. Then we have the Itali GTO Stinger TT. This is basically the big brother version of the regular Itali GTO. This one, of course, is HSW upgradable, and it has a ridiculous top speed. The top speed of it nearly reaches 170 miles per hour. That's extremely quick. It doesn't have enough traction for my liking, especially when going at high speeds. So when it comes to handling, it's all right, but it's not as good. I think cars like the new Niobe are a bit easier to drive even at high speeds. That's only my preference though. Yours might be different, of course. Then we have the Vigero ZX HSW, by far the fastest muscle car in the game. It is insanely fast for a muscle car. It smokes any other muscle car, both in lap time and top speed, and it's a great looking car. I mean, it's based off the iconic Camaro, so I feel like it's a fan favorite in the community along with the Buffalo STX. Let me know which car you prefer, because there's always the comparisons between the Vigero ZX and the Buffalo STX. Extremely fast muscle car right there. Then we have the Torero XO. Really sick looking supercar with the pop-up headlights. That's a really nice feature that not many cars have in the game, especially supercars. It has a very clean and simple futuristic look to it, which I really like, and the traction with it is also good. So you get both great speed and good traction, something you can't say about some other cars, like for example, the Stinger TT that is going to fly off the road when going at high speeds. This one, of course, is a non-HSW vehicle, so we kind of have to lower our standards a little bit, but for a normal car, it's got a crazy high top speed of just over 130 miles per hour. Just wanted to have enough options of non-HSW vehicles that are available on all platforms. If you went on to find this video helpful, drop a like on it and subscribe if you're new to the channel for more awesome videos like these that you do not want to miss, and click the video on screen now for the best off-road vehicles in GTA Online. 
I hope you all enjoyed that video, and peace.